Avalanches are every skier's worst nightmare, but I've learned a couple things over my career that have helped me stay a lot safer in avalanche terrain. So I just want to show you guys what I've learned and share the knowledge so that you guys can be safe in avalanche terrain. Okay, rewinding a little bit, before I even get out on the skins, I've already checked the avalanche forecast. Now, the purpose of the avalanche forecast is to give us a broad view of the problems that we should be looking for. Um, so basically, they'll tell us maybe this area has a persistent weak layer, or this area has had some high winds, so we should be on the lookout for wind layers. Now, this doesn't give the exacts for what you might see on that day, but it gives you a good idea of what you should keep an eye out for. And so today, for our zone that we're going to be trying to get up into, I know that the two things that I'm supposed to be looking for as far as avalanches go is there's a weak layer about one to two feet down, and it hasn't been super reactive, but it is a problem that we're keeping an eye on. And then there's another really spooky layer about six feet down. Now, I don't think that we're going to have this out here, at least not that deep, just because of how the snow builds up in this area but that is something that i'm keeping an eye out for is those two different layers so the avalanche forecast is kind of our most zoomed out view it gives us a good idea of what to look for in the zone but it doesn't tell us exactly what we're going to be looking at when we get into like a specific area so the next step that we're going to do to know exactly what we're looking at is dig a pit and that'll give us a zone specific idea of what we have to deal with before we even get to the pit we have to figure out where to dig the pit so over here we have a southeast facing aspect and then back behind me, we have a northeast facing aspect. So we have to figure out what we're gonna ski and what aspect that is. Um, I just so happen to know that what I'm trying to ski today is a northeast facing aspect. So I'm gonna be much more inclined to dig my pit back here because I know that it's gonna be accurate to where I'm trying to ski. Um, if I dug a pit over here, it could give me wildly inaccurate results. And so we definitely wanna make sure that we're digging the pits on the same aspect that we're trying to ski. Additionally, when we're looking for a pit location, you wanna make sure that you're not putting yourself in danger when you're digging the pit. If you're on a really steep slope and above some dangerous stuff, that's not a good spot to dig a pit. <laughs> so the ideal goal for a pit would be below 35 degrees. We're trying to not go too steep. And then we also wanna make sure that we're not putting ourselves in danger. So not above any terrain traps or hazards or anything like that. And then we also want to make sure that we're trying to get the same aspect that we're trying to ski. So right behind me, there's this nice little meadow that we're going to put our pit in and it's going to be perfect. So let's jump over there. Okay, we're going to start off with an ECT. This is an extended column test. So basically we're going to dig this big column of snow. We're going to separate it from all the snow around it. And then we're going to give it some taps. And the number of taps that it holds up to tells us how stable the snowpack is. So I'll, I'll give you a much more better breakdown here as I dig the pit, but that's basically what we're up to right now. Okay, so some of the tools that I'm gonna be using to do this test. Um, first off, we got a shovel. You should always be carrying this in the backcountry anyway, so might as well use it for this. You may need a probe. Um, this you should also be carrying in all your avalanche stuff. And then the last thing that you may need, and my favorite way to cut the snow, which I'll show you what I'm doing there, but is a little rope. So I have this rope that I put all these knots inside so it can cut through hard layers. And this is my favorite way to cut through the snow. So that's the third thing that you'll need. And I believe that that's it. So what we're gonna start off with is digging off this butt kind of standing platform. So I'm kind of just gonna dig straight into the slope until it gets about, I don't know, about waist level or so. It kind of varies depending on where you're digging it, but I'm just gonna dig out a little bit into the slope. Okay, now as you guys can hopefully see, I kind of have this pit dug out, and then I have a bit of a wall going on over here. So next up, I'm gonna extend this wall out a little bit, and then I'll show you guys what's next. Okay, now just so that we can see things better, I'm gonna shave this off so it's a nice smooth wall. And there you can see, as I cut off this top layer, you can see right about here, I can push off this top layer. So that's a little spooky, but we'll see what the test does. And going back to our avalanche forecast, this is right about what they were saying. This is around a foot. It's not gonna be exactly, but um, it's around a foot deep. And there's that layer that they're talking about. So 
the avalanche forecast was accurate. Next up, we have to make this into a column that is not touching any snow around it, or not connected to any snow around it. Um, so how we're gonna do that is we're going to dig out a little channel on the left side, um, and then we're gonna stick our probe back here, and then we're going to saw it with that string um, and just saw it on down, which I'll show you guys how that's done. So what you're aiming for is the shovel's length wide, um, and then you want the shovel's length deep, and that's all the measurements you need. <laughs> Um, at, like as we're digging pits, we're just looking for as many signs as possible. So as I'm digging this little channel in, I dug out the two sides. I'm sticking my shovel in the back and applying a little bit of pressure. And I'm just trying to see if it'll pop like you can see it did right there. <clears throat> that popped all the way at the bottom. So we'll see. It might be a turnaround kind of day. Okay, so we have our hole dug so that we can dig the rest of this out. And then we dug this wall so it's nice and clean so that we can see any layers if there's any visible. Next up, we dug out this little channel over here so that we can cut this layer separate. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. Next up, what I'm doing is cutting the layer. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my probe in right about there and then I'm going to get my string and saw her on down. So I'll show you guys how to do it. Stick that down nice and straight, as straight as you can get it. If you didn't hit the ground, this will also give you an opportunity to see how deep the layer, or how deep the snowpack is. Um, because normally, you're not digging down to the ground. That is not normal. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna loop this around the probe. And so we're doing this kind of motion. We're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth as we push down so that it's cutting. And then we're just gonna cut our way down. So you have to apply a decent amount of downward pressure. Oh, there's a hard layer right there. And then, whoa. And there we are. We are on the ground. So then you just let go of your short end, pull your string right on through, and then you're good to go. So now we have ourselves this block of snow right here that is separated from all the snow around it. So basically that is going to allow us to, what we're gonna do is put our shovel on top like this to distribute the force, and then we're gonna tap our shovel. And so what you do is you start off with a wrist tap, and so you're just raising your hand and letting your weight fall. You're not, you're not hitting it, you're just letting the weight fall. And you do that 10 times. One, two, three and then you go up to ten <clears throat> and then after you get ten of those what we're gonna do is go from the elbow so we're gonna raise our hand up same thing let the weight fall boom and then if the pit's still standing <laughs> which hopefully it is if you want to ski you raise it all the way up from the shoulder let it fall and that tends to hurt a little bit so I have a trick that I do to make it a little less painful but let's get into it um, this test is going to test for two things so First off, we wanna see if there's any weak layers. That's the most important part. Um, but second off, we wanna see if the layers are gonna do something called propagation. Propagation is where the layer breaks, but it also breaks the snow around it. The like the layer just continues to crack. And so if the layer only breaks under the shovel and only this half of the test cracks, that would be a non-propagating slab. But if I tap this and the whole thing slabs off, that would be a propagating slab, and that is not what you want. So let's put all that to use and get right to it. <clears throat> so we're just gonna get tapping away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we don't have any failures on the pat. That is good. If you have a failure on the pat, you should get out of there. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go from the elbow, and we're gonna do a ten again. So. One, two, three, four. Oh, I could see a little bit of settling on that layer. So I'm giving it a little bit of a push this way with my shovel, and I can just slide it right off. And you can see there's this nice clean layer down here. And so what we'd call that is an ECT 14, um, because when it broke, was it 14? Um, that is not super stable conditions. I'm probably not gonna be skiing above me at all because it starts to get much more dangerous up there okay so if we do want to keep testing for that bottom slab i mean there's not a whole lot of science anymore to it 
but we can keep tapping it and just see if anything breaks. And there's another one. And we can see if we push, boom. There's a big layer. Holy cow. So what that tells us is that our avalanche forecast is pretty accurate. While the depths that they were talking about may have been slightly off, they, we still did have both of those layers to worry about. <clears throat> we had that layer kind of on the topper part of those surface, and then we had that super deep buried layer. Um, and so my judgment based off of all of our scientific calculations that we've done here <laughs> is that I'm probably not gonna ski above us at all today. Um, the layers just need some more time to settle. And that's the nice part about these layers is that through the season, as they have time to kind of bond together, they do get stronger, which is awesome. Um, but that deep layer is gonna be a concern for a while. That's, that's been there for a while already, and it's still pretty sketchy. So it'll be interesting. Um, one last thing you guys can see is that this, you can see where I cut back here. So there's these nice smooth walls on both these sides, and I didn't do that with a shovel, that was with the string. So I can show you guys. The probe was right here and I was cutting around the probe. Um, and so it cut these nice walls on both sides and it separated that layer from the rest of the snow, which gave us a test that we can actually do. Since I didn't get to show you guys back there since it broke before we got to it, after you do the elbow taps, you switch to the shoulder taps, which you're raising all the way up and just letting your hand fall. But that tends to hurt because you're hitting this metal shovel. So I like to sweep a little bit of snow off from above and put it right on top of the shovel. And then you can do it with a lot less pain, but you're delivering the same amount of force. That was my little tip that I want to show you guys. Okay, so we're obviously not skiing anything crazy today. Um, so let's look at some head cam footage and I can show you guys some of the last steps in avalanche mitigation. Okay, so jumping into the head cam footage, here we go. Okay, so right away off of this clip, you can see that there's a decent amount of wind loading going on. Um, you can see kind of right below my skis, there's a little bit of ripples going on and that tends to happen from wind loading. You can also see on the top left-ish part of the screen that there's a little bit of coreness happening. And so we can see that the wind is in fact infecting this area. And so as I'm skiing this, I'm taking that into consideration. Um, I had a plan and I had a bunch of buddies and I was comfortable in this zone. And so I'd made the decision to ski it, but that wasn't necessarily the right decision. And you're about to see why. You can see I'm checking out my line. I'm seeing what's below me. I'm seeing if I have any hazards and I'm kind of looking for a zone that I can duck into if anything were to break. Um, the most likely spot for an avalanche to break, at least on this style of terrain, is the very top. And so as we drop into our line, that is the most likely time for an avalanche to break. So we're going to do something called a ski cut. A ski cut is basically where we're just going across the top of the line, we're going to ski across and just give a little bounce and just see if the snow is doing anything. And so in a second, you'll be able to see me do this. And let's let's check it out. Okay, I'm about ready to drop. Here we go. So right now I'm dropping in and I ski cut a little bit there and then we're just huh. kind of traversing. Normally we would want to ski cut a little bit more. Um, I would prefer that I would have came in a little bit further to the skier's left and ski cut across the hill a little bit more. And that would be a lot. I'd be able to get a sense for how everything's feeling a lot better. And so now that I'm standing on the end of my ski cut, I'm looking and finding a spot where I can go and have an escape. And so I'm looking down and I'm saying, if this were to slide, where could I ski to that would get me out of the slide path as fast as possible? And so I'm looking down, I know that if this slid, it would all kind of funnel down into this gully right below me. And so I look off to this left section, I see this little pocket of trees, right below this cliff band, and I've decided that that's gonna be my pocket. And so you can see as I drop in, since I'm a little bit more worried about how this snow might react, I'm gonna ski straight for that pocket, no matter if it cracks or not. And you can see that was a good decision. Okay. And there it is. You can see, let's get back a little bit. You can see right here, there's this big crack all around me. And so I'm standing in the middle of this slab, which is not the spot you wanna be. Preferably a slab only breaks below you, but this was a very reactive wind loaded slab. And so it cracked everywhere. <clears throat> um, and so you can see, I know I saw it crack 
And I'm like, okay, I already have a plan. I'm not freaking out. I'm just going to go straight for my plan. And we can see that here. And so I made it to my little pocket there. I look back to see, make sure that nothing's coming towards me and that I don't need to keep going. And we can watch this slide just go right down the gully. So we got the ski cut down. Um, next up, once, you're, once you've done your ski cut, assuming it hasn't all slid yet, <laughs> and even if you're feeling comfortable with the train, I would have an escape plan, but maybe not be as committed to it yet. So that if something does slide in the moment, you don't have to think about where to go. You can just go, I already have this spot, we're going here. So we did the ski cut, we have an escape plan. Um, next up, you're going to want to look around you. So um, let's go look at this other clip that I have and get an idea for that. Okay, so you can see as I drop into this one, this is a 360 camera, so it doesn't show it as well as a GoPro. But right when I get about to the middle of my line, I do a quick look behind me to make sure that nothing's following me. So let's look, check it out. One, here we go. And right there, you can see my head right there. I'm looking over my shoulder to make sure that nothing's following me. And you just want to do this for safety's sake, because if you don't know something's following you, then you could stop at the bottom and just get taken out. And that is not what we want. So those are our three things that we should do when we're skiing a line. Uh, assuming that you've already dug your pit, you've already checked your avalanche forecast, and that you've decided from all of those that you want to ski the line still. These are the things that you can do when you're on the line to help mitigate risk. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to check out the rest of our backcountry series, we're producing a bunch of videos around it where we're trying to ski this pretty epic line. So check out this video up here whenever it gets uploaded, and thank you guys for watching.